Hello there. This is going to be a general love reading for all signs. Yeah, I don't know if you just heard that little chirp, but all of a sudden now one of my fire alarms wants to go off and make a scene, which the timing of that is incredible. And it's like an alarm, right? Saying beep, it's time. And I have extremely high ceilings. I know you might not be able to tell, but I, they're extremely high. That even if I were to sound in a chair, I don't have like a big ladder or anything. Like I can't reach it. So I'm going to have to get somebody tall to come in here and remedy the battery situation. But in the meantime, if you hear the chirping, that's what it is, bitch. Oh my God. Can I tell you, first of all, I want to just say this, that the Super Bowl is going on right now. I chose not to go to any Super Bowl parties. I chose to stay home, get my nails did for Valentine's. I got me some summer rose and some veggie pho, which I will partake in later. But I was just watching the Super Bowl halftime show. And can I just say this? I was a little nervous when he opened up with the song. I was a little nervous. That wasn't what I thought he was going to open up with. I, I'm going to be honest. I was like, mm. Usher brought that. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, he did. Chicken skin. I have the chills. He brought that. He was on them roller skates, honey. I knew it was coming too when he turned his hat backwards, cocked that motherfucker to the side, honey. I said, oh, oh, okay. And then little John came out and literally said, okay. I did not think I would, I'm telling you guys now I'm a huge Eminem fan. And when Eminem came on the Super Bowl, I thought, oh my God, this is it. There's nobody going to top that. My man could have been up there for two minutes just talking to shit. Eminem doing nothing but standing there. And it's the best thing to me. Wow, Usher brought that. First of all, now here we go. So I'm pumped because I just finished watching that and I literally turned the TV off. Because I don't care. I hope both teams lose. If my Packers ain't in there. So you got new love. So this is love. That's what I hear in my head. Nin, 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 nin. So this is love. Oh my God, an unexpected arrival. Oh my, nobody panic. I even put little white hearts on my, my ring fingers. Um, nobody panic. But it's new love coming in unexpectedly. We've got friendship bottom of the deck. And for some of you, yes, it could be this tale as old as time that we have been channeling where it's a friendship or it's something platonic that, dare I say, very suddenly explodes into something more. It explodes into something more. I, I say it explodes into it because it feels like it's like... like molasses it's like a fucking snail i mean that might have just been two weeks so <laughs> for some of you it was three months bitch i don't we, we exaggerate around here right but you know when it feels like that you were like oh my god it was like two weeks but it was like five lifetimes okay so the feeling of it regardless if it was very long or not the platonic, the friendship, it feels like that may have taken forever, forever, ever, forever, ever. And then I feel that it just explodes. It just got, it just happens. So I don't feel like there's um like, okay, well, we just, we started dating. And then like, um, I don't know, man. I, I think there was absolutely nothing. And then boom, something is the feeling I get. Tale as old as time. It's this platonic friendship. Dreaming of you. Yeah, I bet the fuck they are. You know, it's also daydreaming. You know, they might have literally had a dream of you. Don't get me wrong, right? Of course. But it, it feels like daydreaming. They, they're thinking about you when they're not with you. They're thinking about you when they don't want to be thinking about you. Why am I constantly thinking of them? I feel like it's frustration almost. Like, what the fuck is... What's going on? Why am I constantly thinking about them? 
Maybe that's that epiphany, yeah? Boom! Uh, so this is love. I think there's a moment here that there's a there's like a somebody gets hit by lightning or it's like it's like a ton of bricks that hits them and i feel like it's this realization of i think i'm in love i think this is more i think this is deeper than just friendship 7 of cups i'm going to be honest with you they don't know they don't know exactly what the situation is got all these seven cups there's all these different options and things in there They're, they don't know so you guys obviously haven't had a conversation like hey we're gonna have a conversation about this and you know what this is what it is i don't think a conversation has been had yet and i don't even know if you're gonna have a conversation it might just be one day they're like hey you want to just go out to lunch you know what i've been wanting to go check out fucking napa valley you want to just come with me like no one else can come with me should we just like go it's like but but so it's like there's this like confusion and what it feels to me also is they don't know if you have other options they don't know three of swords they're really afraid that they're going to ruin this professional relationship this co-worker relationship, this friendship, they're afraid of that. I think that like, they think, what if I'm wrong and it's not what it is and I make a move or I make an advance to them and then they go, whoa, buddy, hold on a second there. Uh, you is my friend. You can be that. You know, it's like he's afraid if, or, or she's afraid if they say, well, I would like to be more than friends. And your response is, oh, cool, you can be my assistant. They don't want to get hurt and they don't want to break whatever this is you guys have by ruining it and, and like jumping the gun and being wrong. Three of Cups. It's casual friendship, Seven of Wands, yeah. See, they don't know. Is this just fun? Is this just a friendship? Is this just casual? Is this just a fucking acquaintance? I, 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 it's like there's a shield, a block. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's a block. Like, if I shoot my shot, is um, is it going to be like, is it going to boomerang back at me? Is it going to ricochet? They don't know. Oh, Ace of Cups. I told you this is love. I told you that's what they feel. It's love. They can feel it in every cell of their body. And, it, and, and it's so, almost this realization of, it might be when they look at you. I don't know why, because I just saw like a man looking at a woman like. And then all of a sudden he just kind of like looks down and kind of like looks back up at her. And then, <laughs> so this is love. <laughs> na, 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 na. <laughs> of course they're going to fucking fall in love with you because you're vibrating high. You're beautiful inside and out. You don't take no shit. You love the fuck out of yourself. You're successful. You're smart. You're intelligent. You are, um, it's go you know, you're, you're witty. You're charismatic. You're magical. There's a friendship. Knave of Cups. Friendship. Three of Swords again. They are so afraid that if they attempt more than the platonic whatever the fuck you have, that they will get rejected. That's what they're afraid of. And you know, this justice card right here. I mean, look at her. She's sitting on a fucking throne. She's got the scales of justice. And she's, you know, saying like, bro, you got to come and you got to come correct. You got to match my shit. And this bitch will weigh it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We'd be all, yeah, you're going to come. You're going to come correct. And when they come, we're going to weigh this motherfucker out. Let me weigh out your 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 intentions. Weigh out your actions. You know, she, the, the, she don't fuck around. That sword she has as well, too, is what they're afraid of. They're afraid that she, she may tell them something very hurtful. <laughs> the worst they can say is no. Uh, the worst they can say is ill. I don't know about you, but I, they can say worse things, honey. This person here is, they're pining. They're fucking damn madly in love. Look at the way he looks. He looks like a little teenage boy lovesick. 
They're lovesick. They're daydreaming. They can't stop thinking about you. They're wondering if they shoot their shot. Is it gonna, is it gonna be, you know, received well? Is, is what do they say? But then what if what if I ruin our friendship? I'd rather be friends with them than nothing at all. I don't want to ruin this like relationship because we're co-workers and I gotta go and see them every day. There's all this thought process behind this masculine energy. And what it feels like to me is this particular masculine is saying. Oh God, I just heard something in my head. It's from Bridget Jones. It's from Bridget Jones. Oh my God, look at that. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, in Bridget Jones, when he says, I, I like you just the way you are. And she tells her friends and they're all like, he said he likes you just the way you are. Like, you don't need to be skinnier. You don't need to quit smoking. You don't need to dress differently. And she's like, no, he said he just likes me just the way I am. And they're just like, I mean, because isn't that what we all want? Someone that just loves who we are. Not someone that wishes we looked differently or we acted differently or we, we, you know what I mean? They love us just the way we are. I feel like they love you just the way you are. I gotta change the blinds this afternoon. Oh, you motherfucker. And if you've never seen Bridget Jones' Diary, it's amazing. It's so funny. Every time I'm on, I'm on a plane flying, and it's one of the movie options on whatever plane I'm flying, usually Delta or United. Uh, United, they're kind of shitty. You got to use the app on their phone. So I like Delta because they have the screens. But anyways, um, it's the modern day Pride and Prejudice. That's why his name is Mark Darcy in, in Bridget Jones because he's Mr. Darcy. So I love them. They're amazing. But this person loves you just the Look at him, he's so in love. <sighs> he's pining, look at the way he's holding his wand. He's like holding his wand going. <sighs> <sighs> Finally, shit, good, yearn, pine, you would feel good, table's turn. I mean, so this is love. Mm, it's so valentine -y. Look at Cupid. You have here, like, they're both in a heart. It's a red heart. They're both kissing. It's so, like, old school. You know what I mean? Like, there's this old-fashioned sort of vintage love to this. You know, I, I don't know what the feeling of that would be, but maybe it's like that. Maybe it's going to be like how when our grandparents fell in love when they were young, you know, back in those days where it's like, you know um at the drive-in you know what i'm saying like they would go in there and have a milkshake and they <laughs> jukebox and shit i don't know but there's some sort of a vintage vibe of course i brought a pride and prejudice so that could be another thing too you know very victorian they're in love and he wants to so badly make a move but he's just going like this and he's holding on to that wand, that action. So yes, they've held back. They've held back. I don't think they'll be able to hold back much longer. I mean, we felt that earlier, right? With the new love and the unexpected arrival. They, they won't be able to. Cupid has struck its arrow straight at them. I mean, do I need to sing it? Cupid, draw back your bow and let your arrow go straight to my lover's heart for me. Cupid, please hear my cry and let your arrow fly. He got hit by Cupid's arrow.
Oh, yeah. Remember we talked about she's going to weigh this out to see if they're going to match her. Are they a fucking match? Yes, they are. Look at the six of coins. Balance. Reciprocity. Remember when I said if they're going to come, they better come correct? Look at her hand reaching out to it. See, that's the unexpected arrival. For some of you, it's communication. They might communicate something to you. And she is open and ready and receptive, hunty. Yes, she is. Because they come correct. This is also reciprocated communication. And for those of you right now where the communication is nothing, this is what they're doing during the nothingness. And they're daydreaming of this. Very deceiving. I shared this just last night on my witch's broom, which was amazing. My witch's brew. Um, and I shared this from time to time, you know, throughout the years, but years ago, when I was at the apartment on the beach, I met someone and he was a Cancerian and you know how they are. Oh my God, they're so charming and they're so sweet and romantic. But I remember when I first met this man, I was at work and I mean, he's just, it came in to do a job at our, our job. And so I didn't work with him. I remember I saw him down the hall and I remember just, we made eye contact once and after that he's like never ever looked at me again and I thought oh my god fuck whatever right it's, clearly he's not interested okay whatever and then like a few months later he came back and same thing right was sort of just like saw him there one day I walked into work and he was standing in front of my desk talking to my boss and they were going to install something at our job but um he still didn't look at me. He kind of just glanced at me to see who it was that came through the door. You know what I mean? Whatever. And I was like, wow, this fucking guy. He's like so not interested. Like, oh my God, fuck him. Whatever. He's a stranger, so I'm not going to give much mind. But this is Unawakened Missy now back in those days. I'm at my desk doing my thing, thing, thing. He's just talking to my boss. And then my boss leaves. He's talking to my coworker. And then I'm just not even looking up. I just say one thing, adding to whatever they're talking about. You know, me grouchy in the mornings, right? Drink my coffee and then. And then he just, he said something and then I looked up and we made eye contact again in very close proximity. He was literally right on the opposite side of my desk. And, and I remember it was just that moment where it was like everything changed. And then we just started talking, talking, talking. And my coworker fucking left. We're just talking, 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 talking. And then fast forward, my point here is that later he had told me. We were talking about it. I was like, oh my God, you like didn't even fucking notice or whatever. He's like, I, I saw you the first time. <laughs> you know, the first time I said he's all the way at the end of the hall, he didn't even like pay me any mind. Well, apparently every time I wasn't looking at him, he was looking. And then when he came that second time and he saw I wasn't sitting there, he was like, oh, fuck, I, I, where, where, where's this bitch? Where, where's the girl that sits there? Like, well, she's not here. Oh my God, where the fuck is she? And he said when he heard the door open and I he heard somebody coming in, he was like, oh God, please let it be her. Please, please, please. But you see how I would never have known that. I would never have known that because surfacely he wore this mask. So sometimes the way they're interacting with you or what they're showing you isn't always exactly how they feel. They're doing that because they don't know you or you guys are friends or you're coworkers or it's a platonic something. What are they going to do? Approach you immediately like a fucking jerk, like a creep? No, it's, it's just... And he's, 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 it's not his, it wasn't his personality to be so like staring and a flirt and just wasn't his personality. So my point here is that just sometimes it's not what it seems. And sometimes, no, they're not interested. Right? But in this case, we know based on the cards and what I feel and I'm channeling, they are interested. They're in love. So this is love. Me, 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 me. Yeah, it, it, apparently it is. Apparently it is. You know in this extended, we're going to do it on my website and I'm going to use the sexual cards because the sexual tension here is through the roof. High Priestess, Secrets, someone super witchy. But the secret, see how I said secrets and then the fog comes out? Mystery, hidden, and there it is, confusion. They're just confused. They don't know for certain how you're feeling. They don't know. They don't know if they shoot their shot, will you, will you receive this? 
They don't know where, where they stand because you guys aren't there yet. Now, the thing about the high priestess is she's keeper of secrets. Therefore, she doesn't necessarily wear her heart on her sleeve, which you shouldn't. You don't just wear your heart on your sleeve, right? You have to be able to have your, your guards up. It's just there's confusion here. They don't know, are you guys both on the same page? They don't know. But the secret's going to come out. Yeah, see, they told you sudden. And it says unexpected again. Um, <laughs> sudden, unexpected. Black cat, magic, luck, supernatural. The gathering. Friendship, socialization, autumn, changes. You see how it says friendship and then it said changes. Friendship changes because they don't want to be a fucking friend. Every day I'm going to channel this until it starts breaking through and we go to this next level of energy. Every fucking day it's going to come out. Something platonic is not actually platonic, but it's platonic or casual or friendship because it's still in the confusion of not actually being totally manifested or spoken of or, or whatever yet. They don't want to be your friend. But they're afraid that if you don't feel the same way and they cross that line, they will lose you as a friend. Or it would be uncomfortable at work the next day and for the rest of their life if they have to work there. Or it's your brother's best friend and now you gotta be like, oh my God. Oh my God, how am I gonna be now as my brother's sister, my best friend's sister? Sparks, yeah, lust. Desire chemistry because they're not just your fucking friend. <laughs> Okay, it's not, it, you, they're fang fang throb. They are lusting. They have extreme desire for something deeper, not just physical. Something body, mind, and soul. I want to tune in a little bit. I feel like for some of you, you guys got real close to having sort of like a breakthrough in this, but they didn't say it or they didn't do anything. But it's like you guys may have had moments of like, my God, it's been so close. Oh, my God. He's like, I, I, I swear one time he almost said it. I think one time he, he was going to ask me out. And, and I agree with you because I can feel it. It feels like there's been one, one or two times they almost did it. Yes, with the excellent big happy changes. Um, they won't fucking stop with the changes. It's the changes getting the fuck out of the friend zone. Yes, I want to get the fuck out of the friend zone. Immediately. Expeditiously. Yesterday. it's love it's romance it's not just friendship reconsider that's a that's a, that's a thought the thought process okay well would you re reconsider this as opposed to a staying like this would you reconsider maybe something deeper something more maybe even love maybe even romance they don't know where you're at here because again we're not going to just walk around with our heart on our sleeve they have to earn us Unlikely. That's that unexpected. Unlikely is aka unexpected. Because it's unlikely to be the way you think. It's unlikely to happen the way you think it's going to happen. This is an unlikely turnout is how this is going to go. You're going to say that to people too. You're going to be like, you know what? It's so unlikely because like, oh my God, we just like met at work. Oh my God, it's so unlikely because I just walked in there to like buy a new fucking car. Oh, it's so unlikely because it's my brother's best friend. Oh my God, it's so unlikely. It's my kid's coach. What a beautiful story. My eye is burning. I don't know, my allergies have been really bad.
ask your angels. There could be an angel involved here somehow, someone who has passed and crossed over. There could be someone here guiding this. That could be your, both of your cupids, someone from the other side. I mean, for most of us, we do truly believe that, that our loved ones would pick our perfect match and help guide us together. You know, for me, my grandma, she knows exactly the kind of man I would want and need. I would need someone that would that loved me how she did. No judgment. She she never made me feel I was too loud. I was never too dramatic. I was never too grouchy or moody. I was never too problematic. I was never too rebellious. I was never too wild. She loved me just the way I was. For those always asking, she was Portuguese, almost pure, and then she was French and Hawaiian. But my grandma was this gorgeous, beautiful Portuguese lady. My papa was Filipino, her husband. So my mom's Filipino, a little bit of French, half, well, my mom's half Filipino, almost half Portuguese, and then French and Hawaiian. But, um, Yeah, that's, she would, she would. Cause that's so exactly the way she loved me. So you see how you may have a mother, a father, a grandma, a grandpa, you may have an uncle or an aunt that has passed who you had that type of a connection with and they were your protector. And they're someone that's gonna help us find the one that's gonna come into our life. Who's gonna love us like that and protect us and They'll be handpicked. All right, let's get into this extended. As I said, it's gonna be on my website. Three spots left for my Hawaii retreat meet and greet in July. If you bitches have been sitting on the fence, I repeat, there are three spots left as of today. Information for that is on my website. Click below this video, the word more. It's gonna bring up that first link. It'll take you to my website, saltwaterheroestarot.com. Main page co contains all that info and how you can lock in your deposit to lock in your spot. Now. If you want to rent this extended, it's also on my website in the extended reading section. Look for special love slash oracle readings there. Um, what else? What else? I'm packing up orders, shipping orders. You'll know because you'll get your email. I'm shipping on an enormous amount of Kalima bracelets. I posted it on my Instagram stories. Speaking of which, follow me on Instagram, xi underscore missy underscore xi. It's the only Instagram I have. I have about 36, 37,000 people on there. So don't be duped by all those other fake accounts pretending to be me, okay? Follow me there because I post a bunch of funny memes and inspirational stuff and I'll go live there every once in a while for my subs. But sometimes I'll go live for the public because there's really big shifts and changes. But in any case, I'll catch you in the extended. Thank you for all of your likes, your shares, and your subscriptions here on YouTube. Uh, love you. Bye.